Last year I participated in Ludum Dare 48 where I challenged myself to make a game that fits Wikipedia's definition of survival horror. Creepy atmosphere, combat that makes the player feel weak, and resource management. I was also inspired by Gorilla Tag to do a game where real world physical movement translates directly into in-game movement. So I made a game called Endoparasitic where you play as a scientist who had three limbs torn off by monsters and you have to drag yourself around with one arm and manually reload guns one bullet at a time. Also your health bar is a parasite burrowing to your brain. The game ended up being pretty popular and I'm finally turning it into a full game. So the first thing I needed to do was fix the visuals. I liked the silhouette designs on the characters but the environments were really bland. For Ludum Dare 49, I had experimented with the art style more and came up with this style of randomized floor tiles, props with simple drop shadows, and pseudo 3D walls using Godot's canvas layer system. I went ahead and ported these into Endoparasitic and already things looked way better. I was inspired by Darkwood to use lighting and shadows to limit player visibility visibility, so I added that in using Godot's built-in 2D lighting system. But I didn't like how this made it look like there were super tall 3D walls sticking out of the floor, and also I didn't like that people kept comparing it to Ape Escape. So I wrote a shader to make this distortion effect on the shadows. This was pretty awkward to do, since in Godot, 2D shadows are rendered to a texture, but as far as I can tell, there's no way to access this texture directly. So instead, I had to make the shadows render as bright green, and then make a screen shader that used that green as a chroma key to render the distorted shadows over. This looked a lot cooler but still looked like weird 3D walls, and was still being compared to Ape Escape, so I scrapped Godot's lighting system and wrote my own. I had this idea to make the shadows slowly decay as you moved into them, and grow back as they moved out of your visibility. I spawned a few hundred green circle sprites on the screen, and then did a raycast to the player from each one every frame. If they're visible to the player, they shrink until invisible, and if they're not visible, they grow back to full size. And since they were the chroma key green color, they automatically had the distortion effect applied to them. This looked really cool, but the fact they were on a grid was pretty obvious, so I changed it so they would move to a random offset as they shrunk, which made them look a lot more organic. The performance on the system wasn't the best, so I had to make a few optimizations. Instead of spawning a bunch of sprites, I used a multi-mesh instance 2D to render all the circles, and instead of having each shadow circle raycast the player, I had the player shoot out 64 raycasts in a circle, then each shadow circle could get its angle to the player, find which raycast had the closest angle to its angle, and do a simple distance check to the player to see if it was farther than where the raycast hit, and use that to determine if it was visible. But the main performance problem was simply that GD Script isn't great at doing a lot of iterations in a loop every frame. It's an issue I've run into before with GD Script and just seems to be a weakness with interpreted languages. So to fix this, I rewrote the shadow system in C Sharp instead and more than doubled the performance. I wanted to add some simple 2D lighting like I had in the original prototype to go with my custom shadow system, but apparently there's a bug in Godot where 2D lighting will change the color of the screen that a shader samples when using screen text. Um, even when the lighting shouldn't be visible, and this was breaking my chroma keying on the shadow distortion shader. I figured it wasn't worth it to mess with it more, so I just went with a sprite with an additive material instead. I next implemented the drop shadows for my Ludum Dare 49 entry, but there was a problem. If I just duplicated the parent sprite, or Polygon 2D, offsetted it, and made it a lower Z index, and set it to be black, and partially transparent, it would look great until I moved another prop next to it, and I would get this weird area where they overlapped and the shadows would be more dark. To fix this, I made so all shadows are rendered at the lowest Z index and as pure black. Then I use a back buffer copy node to copy the screen right above the shadows. Then at the next higher Z indexes, I render the floors and anything on them. Above this, I then have a large sprite that covers the entire screen and has a custom shader on it, and that will render the screen that the back buffer copy node had copied from earlier, but it will discard any pixel that's not pure black. And then I can just adjust this large sprite's transparency and get clean, consistent shadows everywhere. And finally, above 
this, I just render the props that actually cast the shadows. The drop shadows could also be dynamic, so I can add them to characters as well. I also implemented simple doors and buttons. To show button connections, I made a simple wire display system. I have a wire node, and I instance position 2D nodes as children and place them around. Then when the game is run, the wire node draws lines connecting all the children nodes together. And beyond this, for visuals, I just made some random detail elements to put on the tables and on the floors. The game will be set on a secret research station on an asteroid, so I made three walls and floor tile sets for the three areas I plan to have in the game, which are labs, maintenance, and reception. Right now, I'm focusing on the labs area, and will focus on the subsequent areas as development continues. For new gameplay, I of course had to add new guns in. I figured a double barrel shotgun was the obvious next choice. I went with an over-under design so that you can see both barrels when your character is holding it. Each shotgun shell takes the same space as three revolver bullets in your inventory, but will shoot the equivalent of five revolver bullets with one shot, so they're much more efficient at taking down larger enemies. I also wanted to do a grenade launcher, but I didn't think it fit thematically or mechanically. Why would scientists bring explosives onto a space station? Also, since the game is so claustrophobic, to use the grenade launcher you would have to either shoot it at point blank range and hurt yourself, or be shooting at something you can't really see, and therefore you wouldn't be able to see the cool explosions. So instead of a grenade launcher, I made a flare gun. Each flare takes a space of seven revolver bullets, and when you shoot one, it will light on fire every enemy it passes, killing them within a few seconds. It also bounces a couple times, and of course I made the flares clear shadows they pass. Beyond the new guns, I improved the visuals of the revolver, made the ammo inventory have a visible grid, and added bag pickups that will permanently increase your inventory space. I also implemented a reactive hand cursor to make it obvious what can be interacted with in your inventory, and just to make it feel more responsive in general. I also removed the mouse cursor from regular gameplay, which looks a lot cooler and feels better since now mouse motion directly translates to hand movement. I also added tracers to bullets so you can better see where you shot. It's just a simple stretch sprite that fades over time. And after showing some clips on TikTok, a bunch of people suggested I add in recoil to the guns, which I did and it looks a lot cooler now. I was also suggested to add a little sliding to the movement, which I did as well. I'm considering adding some extremely slippery sections to the game in the future as well now, maybe for a boss fight or something. Another survival horror trope I wanted to add was lots of puzzles. I recently played Paper Mario and liked how there's a bunch of really simple puzzles scattered around the levels. So I made this simple pin lock puzzle that can go on ammo and health containers. It was inspired by that game where you have a bunch of face down cards and have to try to match them by flipping over two at a time. I really like how the locks came out, but I'm worried they might get too repetitive. I'll have to see as people play test the game. I also of course added support for interactable objects like the locked containers and buttons I mentioned, and also things like readable notes. It's a very simple and intuitive system. If you hover your hand over something and a white outline appears, just left click to interact with it. And that's how the save system works as well. There are save points scattered around you just one click to save at, though I did add a one minute timer on them to prevent too much save spamming. Something I was worried about was players accidentally soft locking their saves. Since your health is constantly draining as the parasite burrows to your brain, it's possible to save the game at really low health and then have no way to replenish it before you die. To get around this, I made so when you save, it never overwrites previous save files, but always makes a new file. That way you can always go back to an earlier save file if you've soft locked yourself. And I added low risk screenshots to save files to make it easier to remember what each one is from, since you can't name them. One really simple thing I did to increase responsiveness in the game was to add these pop-ups that appear whenever you pick up something or save the game. I just have a notification displayer node that spawns a piece of text that floats up and fades out. Very easy to do and looks great. I've also added a new enemy beyond the simple zombie enemy. This is a mutated rat. Its behavior is it will sit and twitch randomly, then as soon as you get in sight of it, it will make a noise and charge at you. And if it hits you, it runs off in a semi-random direction. It's fast and deadly, but will die in one revolver shot. My goal with this enemy is to stress players out and get them to move carefully. The rat will almost always see the player before the player sees it, and your only way of knowing it's there is by the sound it makes when it spots you. So you basically have only one chance to hit it before it hits you. For determining where it should retreat to after it hits you, I have it shoot eight ray casts out in all directions. Then it picks whichever one hits something the farthest away and uses that collision point as a position to retreat to. Pretty simple and works fine. Also, I gotta say, Godot 3.5's new navigation system is great. On the door scenes, I've added these nav meshes that can be enabled or disabled if the door is open or closed. Then when making levels, I draw nav meshes that connect to the door meshes and when the game is running, enemies will automatically update their paths based on if a door is open or not. On the enemies, I've also added some functionality that makes use of the new is target reachable method. Basically, if an enemy is in an aggressive state but the player is not reachable for a few seconds, it will return to an idle state. This way you can lock enemies in a room and they won't get stuck running into a wall or making aggressive sounds constantly. Also been doing a fair amount of level design, I'm still figuring out what I want the game to be in terms of gameplay. My only goals right now are to 
just have a lot of stuff to do and try to make the player always be stressed out. I'll figure out the rest as I go. Uh, some other random things I've added to the game. I made a main menu and your cursor is just a high res version of your player character's arm. I made a simple intro cutscene using a bunch of low res NASA images. After that is a cutscene tutorial where you see your limbs getting ripped off, followed by a mini game where you have to use an iron to cauterize your wounds. Story wise, Endoparasitic will be in the same universe as Rot Flesh. I've also hired a writer by the name of Nessa to do the story. I plan to have some voice acting in this game as well, which I'm pretty excited about. And of course, I've hired Jazz Mickle to do a few tracks for the game. I've set up a Steam page for Endoparasitic, so go wishlist it. And yes, I am aiming to release one week before Halloween, so wish me luck. I've only got one month left. I've also started putting demos up on Patreon, so go back me there for $5 if you want to playtest the game and influence how it's developed. Thank you.